What is going on everybody? Welcome to part 20 of our Quantopian tutorial series for algorithmic trading with Python. In this video, we're going to be building on the previous video, which is talking about uh, utilizing the pipeline API. Uh, so to uh, start, we've explained a bit about the pipeline, worked into our initialize uh, function. We did set up the before trading start, and then we left with the handle data really doing nothing but logging some information. So in this tutorial, we're going to be pretty much working completely under handle data, uh, but we'll make a change to initialize. So let's get started. The first thing I'm going to do is get rid of this logging info. We don't really need to be doing that. Uh, and uh, so the strategy is going to work as follows. So we're looking for the companies ordered by uh, the MA ratio. So we want to buy the strongest ratio first. We'll call this a momentum strategy. And, um, and then go from there. So we'll buy the strongest ratios uh, if we have the money. So the way that it, it will work is you'll buy the strongest ratio. And then anytime it's not in the top 300 ratios, we want to sell that. So the way that we do that is we iterate through all companies that are in this context.myuniverse.index if those companies are not in our context.portfolios.positions uh, we want to buy it if it is in the if, if it is already in our we already have a position then we don't want to buy it then what we'll do after that is we iterate through all of our positions and if we have a position that is not in our context.myuniverse.index or our universe, um, we want to sell that position. So that's the plan. Let's do it. So the first thing we need to do is uh, we'll define our cache as context.portfolio.cache. Um, controlling leverage on Quantopian still seems to be a little bit of like black magic or um, an art form. Uh, unfortunately, I wish there was a way to just say like this account can will only be granted so much leverage. That would be a huge request on my my part, um, because right now you leverage can get way out of hand, and in the real world, someone just would not give you that much leverage. But regardless, we're gonna track cash, and then we'll have to do a couple other things to make sure we're not making mistakes with leverage. But for example, if you define cash here. Um, as you buy and sell companies, you, you have to update this cash variable within the, this function here. Uh, but then there's a couple other weird things that happen. So anyway, uh, we'll say cash, and then we're just gonna we're gonna define a, an arbitrary purchase value uh, of um, we'll do fifteen hundred for now. And then what we're gonna start doing is for stock in context dot my universe dot index. If stock not in context.portfolio.positions, uh, we're going to say um, another if statement. We're going to say if purchase underscore value is less than the cash that we have. You could also use an and here and keep adding, but I don't really have the space for that. So I'll just put on a new line. What do we want to do? Well, uh, we're going to order underscore target value um, stock purchase underscore value Oops. Um, and then we have to do cash minus equals that purchase value that way within this loop here we are updating how much money we have in attempt to control our leverage also for some reason sometimes you get to this point and you try to order a ticker and an error occurs. Thus, I am going to encase this in a try uh, and accept. And by the way, if you highlight multiple lines, control and closing brackets will shift over right. Control open bracket will left. So uh, yeah. Um, and then I'm just going to accept and pass. No, that's not Pythonic. You might, you can do whatever you want to do, but for now, this is literally just to keep the program running. Okay, so that's our purchase logic. Now we're going to work on um, the selling logic. So the way that we would sell companies is by is doing this for stock in context dot portfolio dot positions. What do we want to do? 
we want to go through the companies that are in our universe. Uh, so what we would ask is if stock not in uh, context.myuniverse.index, uh, we want to order target value stock zero. Then finally, we wish to record, and we're going to record uh, with the name of leverage context dot account dot. Okay, leverage. There we go. All right. So we're going to go, but you're going to see this causes trouble immediately. Uh, we'll start with 1, 3, 2003, and we'll go all the way um, to, but you'll see within a few a few moments, we're actually going to uh, have an issue here. Um, so what's going to happen for some reason is leverage is going to get way out of hand. I look at this, and I see this is a logical script, I believe. I mean, there might be some minor issues here, but I believe this is a logical script. And up oh, something went wrong anyway. So runtime error line 17 output. Hmm. I am not sure why output line two twenty. Let's try again. That's not even a that, that didn't even change on this uh son of Oh I put okay, I meant to do two thousand three there, so I think that's our issue is that I was trying to pull from two thousand and two. I wish it would tell you, like, oh, no data for 2002 or, or something something useful. Um, wait for it. Okay, so we have our leverage. It's already ticking up like crazy, but that's kind of to be expected. But then, up, oh, shoot, we're at 1.13. Oh, my goodness. It's just going crazy. It's going just mad. So um, this is going to continue going crazy. So first what I'm going to show you, though, is that if I was to come here and, uh, and we'll just... I'll just um, we'll just delete this, okay? That whole that line here. And remember, all this this loop is doing is ordering a target value of zero. That's the it's the target value. So you would think there would be no mistake as far as um, accidentally producing leverage of some kind. I'm not sure how it's occurring, but as I'll, I'll remove that, we'll check the back test here, and you'll see that it didn't actually. It's not causing issue. The other thing you can do is order target uh, percent. And uh, once this loads, I'll show you target percent and how it doesn't do anything either. Um, and uh, and then I'm going to show you guys how I've gone about handling for leverage. But um, there are other ways. I saw one person posted a um, sort of a code as far as handling leverage was concerned. It's actually pretty good code. Um, it was like a class that would control your leverage for you. So anyway. Um, this is, remember, this is actually, this is, this back test is running without that little loop there. Okay, so we're actually doing quite well right now. <laughs> but anyway, and leverage is being held at a perfect one. Canceling the back test. Um, and then let's say we, we try to order a target percent of zero. Um, and you'll see it goes wacky. So I'm going to go back to target value. Or we could leave it as percent, but I'm going to put it as value. Um, what we're going to do it to, to remedy this issue is first we're going to come up to initialize and we're going to add a new variable and this new variable is going to be uh, context dot stocks underscore sold and that's just going to equal a list as you can see leverage is going crazy so I'm just going to cancel it right now okay so that that's going to be stocks sold um, and then what we're going to do is every any time what I believe is occurring and what I'm about to prove um, as a current bug would be uh, that sometimes for some reason this will plausibly double sell a company or something and, and you'll find yourself in, in a leverage situation. So the way we're just going to go around this in a really simple way and every time we sell a company um, we're going to add it to the stock sold list. So order target value stock uh, to zero. What we're going to say is uh, down here context.stocks underscore sold dot append um, the stock. And then what we're going to say right above that, if stock not in context.myuniverse.index, uh, 
uh, and stock not in context dot uh, stocks sold, then we'll perform that operation. That way, hopefully, the stock is only sold one time. Um, finally, what we have to do is if we're doing this, uh, we need to also come up to the handled data. Otherwise, we would, in theory, buy the company and then we may never sell it because of this question here. So when we buy a company, if stock not in blah, 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 we bought that company. What we actually need to do is we need to check if the stock is in context.stocks underscore sold. If it's there, we need to remove it uh, because this is a new position for us. So we're going to say context.stocks uh, sold dot remove stock. Great. Let's build and just make sure um, that things are the way they ought to be. And then if so, uh, we'll run a full back test and I'll probably pause it while I run the full back test. I don't really see much point um, in sitting through it, but um, maybe you guys will sit through it too, but I have nothing more to say. <laughs> so anyway, so it looks like it's building at the moment um, without an issue. We don't appear to be launching out of um, our we appear to have control over leverage, but I'm going to wait until we hopefully get to a, a one, maybe. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and pause it, and I'm going to run the full back test now, uh, just because I'm fairly confident that we're under control of leverage. So everything looks good. So this is from January 3rd, 2003 to 224 2016 That's um, basically to as far as we can go. So now we're gonna go ahead and run a full back test. And while I run this, I'll just pause or something and um, then I'll continue on. All right, so that actually did a lot better than I intended or expected. Um, probably just really got lucky with some of these initial companies here, but you'll see leverage at the highest point was at 0.6, uh, but really for the rest of this strategy, it was at you know 0.5. Uh, looks like my uh, browser is about to crash on this data. <laughs> All right, great. Anyway, uh, so this is going to go down. Any oh, no, it came back alive. Okay, so let's go back to the algorithm while we still can. Um, where, there we go. That's what I want. Uh, and um, I think I might double or something just for kicks. Uh, let's do purchase value. Let's do 3500 Okay. Um, and then I'll run the full back test. I'll pause it. You can stick around if you want. Otherwise, you can leave. Um, these back tests kind of take a while to run, so you can figure out what the answer is uh, maybe a little quicker. So I'll just run this full back test. Um, I'll pause it, and then we'll see what would happen with that larger investment. All right, well, that helped a little bit, but as you can see, our leverage is still pretty low. Um, okay, so you could, you could increase your buy size. Regardless, uh, I really don't trust this output. I mean, it's it's possible this strategy really did this, uh, but and and our leverage did not exceed one. Um, uh, so I don't know. Maybe maybe this is a good strategy. Um, there are plenty of people who buy into a momentum strategy, uh, but I'm skeptical of these earnings, uh, to say the least. Especially these earnings. Although I mean, like here we made quite a bit of our progress at that full 1.0 leverage. Uh, and then we kind of made a lot here at 0.6 leverage, and then we kind of followed the market basically all the way to here until we started going closer to one leverage. Basically, every time we started to go up in leverage, except for like maybe right here, um, we were actually um, outperforming the market. And so maybe you could keep adding. Um, but feel free to play, play around if you want. I don't think that this, you know, maybe these are the real results, but it's probably more by luck as far as which companies we found here. Um, I'd love to see this strategy over even a longer period, but you know, to be honest, this is 13 years. That's a pretty good strategy over the course of 13 years. Um, and there are certain, like we obviously outperformed significantly here, 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 here. Um, and then we start underperforming basically here. Um, so anyway, that's really due to leverage. And I, I part of me wonder, you know, you could probably start coding in some, you know, automated leverage uh, handling, which basically would find all of the companies in your, because basically all the companies in your universe, uh, those are the only companies you would be investing in. Therefore, every, each time you go to make your investments, uh, you could like dynamically choose what the investment size is based on the companies you know you're going to buy. Um, 
And that would be a way to always have like one leverage. So you can think about something like that. And maybe that would work out. Um, but I really meant to just keep this simple. Uh, but it looks like we're off to a pretty, pretty good start if these are reliable results. Uh, so anyways, if you have questions, comments, whatever, feel free to leave them below. Uh, in the next tutorial, we're going to talk about uh, using the syntax data with the pipeline. So anyways, stay tuned for that. Uh, otherwise, till next time.